The SEC play is underway. Demond Washington returning for Auburn. Washington a little crease and he gets up close to the 32 yard line. Sean Broccoli, the kicker, there to make the tackle. 31 yards on the return right on Washington's average from a year ago. The Tiger offense will be led by Cam Newton. Well, after a monster week one performance against Memphis, Cam Newton has the bullseye squarely on his chest tonight. Mississippi State is going to try to pressure him. They're going to try to use a spy on him at certain times, but Craig, they have to try to find a way to contain him tonight. Yeah, if you do too much containing, that gives him time to throw the ball. He has an accurate arm, so it's going to be a toss-up between containment and pressure. Mario Fannin at running back. Newton's first pass is complete. Terrell Zachary on the grab. Zachary has outstanding speed, and he gets a first down. Here are the starting lineups. First for the Auburn offense, Cameron Newton, the quarterback you've seen. They will run a lot of guys in the backfield, including Michael Dyer, the freshman that you'll see later. Zachary already has a catch. Cody Burns, the former quarterback, is out there in this offensive line. 114 combined starts coming to this one. Newton on the run. The big fella gets up to midfield before he's dropped. Charles Mitchell making the stop for the dogs. Here's the starting lineup on defense for Mississippi State. Purnell McPhee is the guy the defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz, will move around on the line of scrimmage, a good pass rusher. The linebackers strong. Chris White, the leader back there, along with K.J. Wright and the defensive backs, very good at intercepting passes. Zachary again on the quick catch. Zachary will be stopped just short of the first down. Looks as if he'll be about a yard short. Chris White making the stop. We've talked about the speed and the pace of offenses in college football and how they have changed. Auburn goes as fast as anybody in college football, so it's going to put a lot of pressure on the defense tonight. Newton under center, Smith gets the carry, a rare one, and he got nothing. So early on, state territory, fourth down. This is what 300 pounds will do for you on the inside. Defensive tackles, you go in there with Cox and Boyd and get penetration. And what a play for Mississippi State. Remember, the strongest position for Auburn as a team is probably up front on the offensive line, so that is a statement by this Mississippi State defense early. Chizik, no doubt. Newton under center. Gonna go for the big one on fourth and short. Newton makes a play with his feet and picks up the first down, and there is the danger of Cameron Newton. For a guy that is six foot six, 250 pounds, it is just remarkable how athletic he is. Watch him here in the pocket. He wants to throw a flat route to his fullback back out left. It's not there, but the beauty of having a mobile quarterback, he'll go move the sticks for you, Craig. Mario Fannin, his first carry of the night. Fannin is stacked up. About the 37, Chris White again on the stop for the dogs. You guys saw that last play. Part of what happened there on defense was Pernell McPhee got way up the field. He lost that containment edge that we're talking about. So on a fourth and short, the discipline, regardless of the play, you've got to stay around to keep him inside the football field. Fannin in the backfield. Mario has it again, avoids one tackler. White's back there, and Fannin will be knocked down for a loss. Chris White is everywhere in the early going for Manny Diaz's defense. Lost a pair. Chris White, a guy who last year played outside linebacker, had to move over this season. Just a nice job scraping down the line of scrimmage, cutting Mario Fannin off, and a nice job wrapping up to allow the game tackle to come. Third and eight. Show and blitz, here they come. A quick completion. Open field, Emery Blake. Tigers have the first score. 39 yards, Cameron Newton. His fourth touchdown pass of the season. Emery Blake, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, and the son of former quarterback Jeff Blake, making a play in the early going and 
Less than four minutes into the game, the Tigers are on top. Yeah, I credit wide receiver Terrell Zachary for opening this up. Look at the block at the top of the screen. He's able to chop the corner, and that allows Blake the alley for the easy walk-in touchdown. West Byram knocks through the extra point. Newton three for three, 56 yards on the drive, including the 39-yard scoring pass to Blake. And just like that, Auburn's offense is struck. Kent State answer, you'll see when you come back. A long drive by Auburn standards took three minutes 38 seconds to put the first touchdown of the night on the board. This is a perfect play drawn up by Gus Malzahn on that scoring play. They had pressure coming from Mississippi State inside, and that man's Nico Whitley at safety one on one with the inside receiver Emery Blake. Cameron Newton does a great job getting the football out of his hands quickly. That's too far of a distance for Nico Whitley to run. That's a walk in touchdown. I, and I give great credit to Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator. He knows what Cody, Bur Cody can hand Camp can handle out there, right? So when, when he sees the pressure coming from the inside, Newton has been coached up. They went into it two different times in that particular series. Newton wasn't confused or, or faced by it one bit. There is Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator, who routinely has put 500 yards of offense up for the Tigers. West Byram kicking it away. Leon Berry returning. Barry will be stopped short of the 30-yard line. 10-yard penalty, first down. Available in 3D. Had a penalty on the kickoff return, so Mississippi State will be backed up inside its own 20. They'll start the possession from their 18-yard line. Holding call going against Chris Cameron, so Chris Welf will come out to start for Dan Mullen's team at quarterback. First pass, Ralph hits Bumpus right in the hands, and Chad can't hold it. The sophomore from Tupelo, who had a big night in the opener against Memphis. Here's the starting lineup for the Bulldogs. You've already seen Chris Ralph, the junior from Montgomery, which is just a little less than an hour from Auburn's campus. Bumpus, a big play guy, despite the drop we saw in the early going. Arcedo Clark, the other receiver. And like Auburn, Mississippi State, a veteran offensive line, 89 combined starts. Bumpus handling it well on the handoff, and he gets close to the first down before he's run out of bounds. The defense for the Tigers, and it has been problematic. Ted Roof's bunch gave up a school record 358 points last year. Antoine Carter is the leader up front. They gave up over 300 yards passing to Arkansas State a week ago. El Toro Freeman gets the start at linebacker. He was a highly touted recruit. Zach Etheridge back from a serious neck injury. Aaron Savage, a sixth-year player in the secondary for Chiswick. Third and four. Good catch by Bumpus looking for a little room, and Chad will make up for the earlier drop before Nico Thorpe runs him out of bounds. A picked up of six, and the first down for State. Les Canning, the offensive coordinator at Mississippi State, knows he's got some players on the outside, especially Bumpus, who can get with linebackers and safeties, and it's a big mismatch. Get the ball in his hands. You know, Craig, I love the play calling on both sides so far, allowing the quarterback short, easy completions to try to get them in the rhythm of this football game. Elf on first down, the option. The big fella has some running room, and Chris Ralph rumbling for another first down. A pickup of 12 before Aaron Savage stops it. Don't let Chris Ralph's size fool you. He's 6'4", 240 pounds, but he can do this. They're going to see a lot of triple option tonight. He feels very, very comfortable running these plays in this offense. And Mississippi State will be patient. You'll see a lot of guard tackles pulling, fullback guards pulling, counters, options, and then all of a sudden play action and they're down the field. Ralph had 131 yards rushing in the victory over Ole Miss last year. This time showing off the arm. He had to get rid of it just before he was cut in half by Josh Mines. Chris Smith with the catch. Ralph stood in there beautifully and delivered the football, a pickup of 17. 
big question coming in this game, who's the real offense? Is it Auburn or Mississippi State? I think you're seeing right here the discipline and play calling of Mississippi State's good. And it was a nice job by Ralph staying in there delivering the football before he gets lit up by middle linebacker Josh Bynes. Nice job by Ralph. On first down, the give is to Robert Elliott into the game. Elliott coming back from a variety of injuries during his career, the junior from Oklahoma, stopped by Josh Evans. And this Mississippi State offense is night and day different than it was a year ago. Last year, they led the SEC in rushing, but they were eighth worst in the country throwing the football. This season, totally different. They can throw it. They are truly balanced on offense. Second down and eight. Ralph had a little trouble with the snap, and now he's got trouble with the Auburn defense. Zach Clayton was in his face. And it'll be third and behind the chains for the Bulldogs. Now, I think a lot of the reason that Mississippi State's going to be better offensively is because the players believe in Dan Mullins. You know, he, he knows how to do it. He's been there. He's done that in this conference. You know, boo-boos like that are going to happen. And he's got to settle down because they were worried and concerned that Ralph might be a little too jacked up for this game. This is an area of the field from Auburn. you got to be careful. They, they show exotic pressures and looks in third down. Ralph needs to pick up 13 to keep the drive going. Not a man out there and a little stumble from Chris Smith, or else he might have been able to run that ball down to Charvin Bell was on the coverage for the Tigers. I think it's outstanding coverage on the outside. Got the foot fire and the foot fault there at the front trying to get it to slip a little bit, but that's still a nice job of staying and covering his job by Bell. One thing Auburn defensive coordinator Ted Ruth told us, the secondary has to play better. They weren't physical as they needed to be last week. They busted a bunch of coverages. Right now, answering the Bell, playing very well so far early in this game. And check the receiver on the last play. It was Leon Berry rather than Chris Smith. It'll be Heath Hutchins. Lined up in punt formation for the dogs. Hutchins driving it inside the 10. Can Mississippi State get it stopped? And they do. An excellent punt by Hutchins. Patrick Hanrahan on the play, the 40-yard punt as Cam Newton backed up in the shadow of his goalpost. Tigers have a long and storied history of tremendous running backs. None greater than Vincent Bo Jackson, the all-time leading rusher in Auburn history. Cadillac Williams right behind him on the list. You see some of the other notable running backs. And Gene Chizik believes that in the not-too-distant future, he has another one in Michael Dyer. He was the number one running back in the country, according to the ESPNU 150. We will see plenty of young Michael Dyer from Little Rock, Arkansas tonight. No. He has not made his first carry yet. It is Ontario McCaleb, of the speedster, picking up one. Auburn started the drive on its own four. With this up-tempo offense, Auburn offensive coordinator Gus Malzahn is trying to dictate to the defense. He's going to try to keep them in base looks, limit their chances to make substitutions, therefore trying to tire them down throughout the course of the game. And if I'm Manny Diaz, his goal tonight, he says, is he wants to make sure we have poise number one and number two get lined up and make a call. Line up right. Second and nine, facing Newton. McCaleb. And Ontario, who's picked up some weight from his freshman year, not quite enough to move that pile just yet. Another short gain will bring up third and eight, Nick Bell and Chris White on the stop. The good news for Mississippi State up front on the defensive line, they should be fresh. The guy that played the most snaps last week was defensive end Pernell McPhee. He only played 22 plays. So they've had a lot of time to rest. They should be ready to go. Now, their goal is to have 22 starters on defense. They want to have two deep where they can rotate a lot. Third and seven. McCaleb trying to bounce to the outside. And Auburn will be in a punting situation. Nick Bell getting the start tonight and making his second straight tackle. How about the Cowbells? They can ring after plays. They just don't want them to ring while the visitors are lining up. It's the first time in 36 years that the SEC has officially allowed cowbells into the stage. And if the rules are broken, the SEC will hand out fines at the end of the season, correct? Yeah, but I think it would be fine for Mississippi State to win. <laughs> They'll take it. 
Ryan Schumacher, a low line drive punt that Bumpus has. Bumpus a dangerous runner, but some excellent coverage by Auburn. It looked like Emery Blake, who caught the touchdown pass, working on special team. Mississippi State with its second possession, hoping to have reason to ring those bells coming up. Mississippi State, excellent field position at the Auburn 47 to start this drive. Chris Ralph, that'll hurt the field position. Down he goes. Excellent pressure from the Auburn front. Mike Blanc getting the sack on Ralph. One thing Mississippi State offensive coordinator Les Cunning told us was pressure was great against Memphis last week. How's it going to look against a much bigger, stronger, and more physical Auburn front? Well, that was only a four-man rush by Auburn, and you see how quickly that pocket collapsed. Second and 18, now facing Kenning and the Dogs. Ralph tried the quarterback draw, and sniffing that out was Nick Fairley, the junior from Mobile, who the coaches say he consistently fires out behind the pads. He can be a dominating defensive lineman. And right now, the, the defensive line is taken into Mississippi State's offensive line. And this is a pretty good offensive line up front, but Ralph not feeling, not seeing it down Did there. Did you see defensive tackle Nick Fairley blow up that double team? They are getting killed right now, the center and guard position inside. Third down, and they got to get it to Tupelo for the first down. And Ralph. Still going backwards. Three negative plays, and guess who in the backfield again? Fairley was first, Michael Goggins was with him, and State will have to punt him. I was watching Nick Fairley on tape this week, and he just jumps off the page. There's another, another double team he's able to beat. He's patient, he pulls, uses the swim move, once again in the backfield. Sure makes coverage down the field easy when that's happening, oh, right? Man. He can take care of a secondary and make him look really good. So three plays, lost 13. Mississippi State will punt it away. Quindarius Carr back to receive the kick. A little hesitation. And Carr lets it go right through him, and the dogs are on it. On the bottom of the pile, first break of the game goes Mississippi State's way. Patrick Hanrahan with the recovery for the Bulldogs. The bobble of the snap allowed the coverage to get down, which allowed it to be a little closer to the punt returner and threw the punt return man off. And Auburn has had major issues in the special teams return game. Last week against Arkansas State, they fumbled the opening kickoff of the second half, and now Kondarius Carr dropping the punt. That gives Mississippi State the football now in the red zone. Well, the last offensive series, disastrous for the dogs. Ralph, shovel pass, got his man, open field for Marcus Green to get inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Bullies, a pickup of 11. When you've got a defense that's flying around, Jesse, what do you do? You take advantage of their over-aggressiveness. And here it is. They're showing triple option. All of the flow of the defense is going to the tailback, and all of a sudden, pullback able to slip underneath. That was tight end Marcus Green on the shovel pass. Nice design. And the first and goal, empty backfield for Ralph. Give inside to Vic Ballard. Ballard driving inside the five and down close to the two-yard line. Well, Mississippi State has to replace Anthony Dixon. And head coach Dan Mullen told us, and Anthony Dixon comes once every 10, 15 years. But we feel we have a stable of backs that can get the job done. And a great left tackle, Derek Sherrod. That time really coming off, getting two good, solid blocks. So when you've got a big man up front who can do that, it usually makes a running back look better. No running backs beside Ralph on the second and goal. Ralph going to keep it himself. Chris Ralph on his feet, stretching. Ball might have gotten loose. We'll let them unpile it as Ralph stretched for the goal line. And the officials are signaling touchdown. Darren Bates of Auburn beside himself signaling 
that Auburn got the ball, but no spotter Mike Black says it's Gabe Jackson who wound up on the bottom of the pile and got it back from Mississippi State. Well, Dan Mullen and Coach Tim Tebow at Florida for three years. This play looks pretty familiar, doesn't it, guys? Uh -huh. QB power inside the five-yard line. Yeah, but you've got to really tuck that football, and you've got to hold on to it as you're going across. And you see the ball got away from his body. Ralph right here as he lowers his shoulder to protect himself and the extra effort. He is a big man. But uh, there's the football yeah. loose on the ground. See it better from this angle, I think, guys. It's Ralph. Ralph was stretching it toward the goal line. Guys, I think that's a fumble. I don't think that ball broke the plane before his knee was down. I think this is Auburn football. I think that's a touchback. Uh, I think Gabe Jackson think got Gabe on the Jackson. ball. Gabe Jackson got on it. 61, didn't he? Uh, that's who ended up with the football. As Ralph is on the sidelines now, the ruling on the field is a touchdown. They will look at it. It's funny. Upstairs. Ruling on the field has been confirmed. Touchdown for the Bulldogs. I've had so many coaches on offense that really didn't like it when players try to stretch the football over the pylon, particularly with one hand, because stuff like that can happen. Uh, you know, defense is taught. Get out there, second and third guys, get to the ball, strip, hand across it. So an outstanding job by Gabe Jackson of being inside there, 61, jumping on the ball. Excellent play. Good hustle by Jackson to be there. And to allow Mississippi State to take advantage of the muffed punt by Auburn. Extra point is true and late in the first quarter in Starkville. We're tied at seven. Two high-powered offenses. East has a touchdown so far. Welcome back to Starkville. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jen Brown. Auburn and Mississippi State tied at seven. That is Patrick Han Hanrahan. He was just called for a personal foul on the extra point. So Mississippi State will be backed up 15 yards on the kickoff. Perhaps worth noting that Hanrahan started his college football career at Alabama and is now called for a personal foul against his former arch rival. Now let's see if we can pick up what Hanrahan did a little little headbutt and the Vlade Divac's reaction from Darren Bates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sometimes you got to be a good actor. <laughs> but still completely unnecessary. Mullen wants to hear none of Hanrahan's excuses since his kickoff team will now put it in play from the 15 instead of the 30. And that's the problem if you're Mississippi State. All of a sudden you have a huge momentum shifting touchdown. Now you're going to kick off. There's a great chance Auburn's going to start this drive with excellent field possession. Tom Brockley is going to kick it away for Mississippi State. So far has had an advantage in the kicking game. Killed a punt on the Auburn four and then took advantage of the muff to set up their touchdown. Brockley puts a foot into it. Come on, Washington at his 20. Washington a little seam. He's got great speed. Washington gets it into Mississippi State territory. A headgear goes flying, and Brockley again there to make the stop on the kickoff for Mississippi State. 33 yards on the return. So good field position this time for the Tiger offense, which when last we saw Cam Newton backed up inside his five, and Gus Malzahn was pretty conservative with the play calling backed up in his own end. Michael Dyer into the game for the first time tonight. The freshman running back, number five for the Tigers. Fake to Dyer. Newton, Zachary complete and a lot of room. Terrell Zachary inside the 35, a first down for Auburn. Corey Broomfield on the stop, but not before Zachary picks up 15. You do not want to give Auburn the football in a short field because they do not take a long time to score points. Last week, six of their seven touchdown drives was scored in two minutes or less. Well, and that's a 20-yard cushion. That just can't happen. And you know that Cam Newton is schooled up on those. Dyer's first carry, and he is greeted rudely in the backfield. And welcome the freshman to SEC play, Pernell McPhee, Maurice Langston on the stop. When I say schooled up, he sees that, Jesse. And you know that Dan Mullen has taught him. You see a cushion like that, come up and let's hit it. You just got to compete. You can't give away yards, particularly against this offense coached by Gus Malzahn. 
Newton to throw on second down. Wants it all. Darvin Adams is out there and it's intercepted. Nico Whitley in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Two turnovers in the first quarter for Auburn. This is the right read by Cameron Newton, but it's the wrong type of throw. He's got Darvin Adams working down the seam. That has to be a straight ball shot. He instead floats it, and that allows safety Nico Wheatley to come over and make the play. You know, watching the film study yesterday, that was the one thing that we noticed, that the secondary was moving, they were flying around. This was a secondary that last year had six different combinations, and they took a lot of heat. So this year, this was the question, can they step up and match what they hoped the offense was going to give them? State gave up a lot of passing yards last year and passing touchdowns, but they were proficient at interception. There were 17 of them. Mississippi State. The first Mississippi time out of the State half. uses its first time out of the half. Chris Welch still in at quarterback. First down after the interception and getting the first carry is Robert Elliott and Auburn's defensive line, which has been stout in the early going. Stuffs out Mr. Elliott before he even gets started. Yeah, Florida State did look like they were running, didn't they, last week? Kind of like the old Seminoles track meet and mm -hmm. had a lot of confidence in what they were doing. And how about Florida State on defense? Again, I know it's Sanford, sure, yeah. but Mark Stoops' defense, two field goals. Pretty good. It's a balanced team. And second down, Ralph leaves it with his inside man. It was Sylvester Hemphill getting his first carry of the night. And in that Florida State-Oklahoma game, it will be brother against brother with Mark Stoops moving from Arizona to take over as defensive coordinator at Florida State his first year against big brother Bob. <laughs> the story goes that Mark didn't know when he took the job that he was going to have to play at Oklahoma. And Bob said, well, you do know what that means. We're going to be playing each other. <laughs> Imagine the competitive juices will be flowing as they are here tonight. Third down. Elliott has it. Little room. Robert Elliott squirts across the 30-yard line, and he has the first down. Now, this is a bread-and-butter play here. Right side, you see the pulling that's going to take place. Elliott gets in behind this big guard and tackle. Great execution, and what you have to be mindful of, right, Jesse, is to, down the road, worry about the play action off of that. No question. I think it's this veteran offensive line in Mississippi State right now imposing its will in the run game. They've struggled in protection, but in the run game, they're getting great push. We've seen big plays in the first quarter. The bells are ringing, and we're tied in Starkville. Tyler Russell, the sophomore, or retro freshman quarterback, I should say, from Meridian, Mississippi, has checked in for the first time tonight. Russell to throw it. He'll check down. He's got Elliott. Robert Elliott takes a big hit. And delivering it was Nosa Igwe. The freshman picked up three. Now, Russell, more of a passer, pure passer type. And probably the most heralded recruit ever to sign a quarterback here at Mississippi State. Tied a school record with four touchdowns a week ago. He's got to be poised against a much better defense. Russell again, easy pitch and catch. He's got his man. And up close to the first down does Brandon Heavens. Heavens who had over 100 yards receiving and a couple of touchdowns against Memphis last week. I think it's a good time to put Russell in because your offensive line has set their pads. Really, you've got the running game going, so you've got some balance there. And, and it shows the confidence the head coach Dan Mullen has in his young freshman quarterback. Here you are, monster SEC West division game earlier in the season, tie ball game. You have no reservations about putting your freshman in. Mississippi State needs to convert this third and short. Auburn got a good push. Elliott pounding inside. He'll have the first down up close to the 46-yard line. And you know, that's one thing that Dan Mullen told us yesterday. Last week against Memphis, a set rotation for when Tyler Russell would come into the game. Wanted to protect him a little bit more tonight. Wanted to make sure he didn't get it deep in negative territory. He wanted to play him in the first quarter if he could. That wasn't the case. It's not the way this game has played out so far. But, Craig, I'm with you. Good time to put him in. Auburn showing a little pressure.
play clock headed to five. Russell the draw. And give to Ballard. A short gain. Aaron Savage coming up from his safety position to make the stop for the Tigers. Now this is the quarterback comparison a week ago. Ralph on his first pass through an interception. The offensive coordinator Les Kenning said it was a really good pass. It was a spiral. Hit the defender right in the numbers. So, so he was really eight for nine. Yeah, it was perfect. The, and the ninth one was a drop, I think. The one word I heard from the coaching staff was that he doesn't panic. That, that Russell's calm. And Russell looking at a second and eight. Here is Tyler. He coming. Gets rid of it. Ball is dropped. Brandon Henderson had it. The heat was coming once again from Nick Fairley, who is wreaking havoc in the Mississippi State backfield. Man, it really shows me something here about the poise of Russell and the awareness of the game. He knows that Fairley's coming and going to hit him. He buys a little time with his feet to deliver the ball. Mississippi State offensively is going to have to find an answer to block Nick Fairley. It might take a center guard. It might take guard tackle. The back might have to help. Somebody has to help because he is blowing it up right now in the backfield. Whistles. Official stop play. The previous play is under further review. The throw was toward Brandon Henderson. It appeared that he never had it. You heard from Matt Austin, the referee. And while they look at this to, I assume, determine whether it was a catch and a fumble. Brandon Henderson just sits down in the zone. It looks from here as though the ball gets into his body. That's a yeah. pretty obvious That's call. Obvious I, I don't there. think this one will take very long. No. Fairly, really applying the heat and consistency, as we mentioned, is what they want from Nick Fairley. And with Auburn's defense struggling at times in coverage, particularly in the opener and last year, pass rush would help that, and Fairley can provide that. The best friend, the best news for a defensive coordinator is when he can get pressure with only four players. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Third down. And that is what Auburn's been able to do tonight. They haven't had to sacrifice linebackers and safeties to get pressure on the Mississippi State quarterbacks. Yeah, that, but you know, when you've got four committed up there, that's why Mississippi State's had a good job of running the ball at times. So I think they're going to go back and be balanced with that. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think this coaching staff has to take a hard look and just understand, hey, we're beating them off the ball when we're running the football. Let's stick with that and wear these guys down. Since State... Picked off Cameron Newton in the end zone. This is their ninth play. They're just now to midfield. Third and eight. Facing the young quarterback. Russell delivers. It is intercepted by guess who? What a game Nick Fairley is having. This time instead of coming with the pressure, he dropped back and grabbed it. You're going to see a lot of different bodies, and Jesse, as a quarterback, you know for certain here, at the snap of the football, the look and the change of what they did defensively got to the quarterback. Absolutely, Craig. It was a great job confusing the young freshmen. They show all blitz. The quarterback thinks there's nobody deep. He's got to make a hot read throw. The defensive line on the zone pressure able to back out, and there's Nick Fairley probably having the game of his career right now. How about in less than 18 minutes of football, he's got three tackles, half a sack, and an interception. Somebody wants to be player of the game tonight. He's got the uh, the pants so far. <laughs> yeah. Newton on the option. McCaleb's got great speed. Ontario McCaleb inside the 40. Emmanuel Gatling on the stop, so Mississippi State took care an advantage of an Auburn turnover, and now Auburn trying to return the favor. Edge to the corner there. Chris White, number 50, didn't get out fast enough, and a nice job of blocking on the corner by the receiver, Emory Blake. This time, Newton's going to keep it. <laughs> he uses that big body and gets down to the 33-yard line. Boy, he is... He is a load coming through there, 250-ish. He is a big, big man. The cannon arm, Dan Mullen, who knows him well. He can throw it 85 yards. And certainly his running prowess evident in the opener last week, the 171 yards against Arkansas State. Now Newton leading Auburn on a drive.
Dumps it down to Blake. He caught the touchdown pass earlier, and Emery Blake stopped by Emmanuel Gatling, the former walk-on. Now a senior, the chemical engineer major, there to make the stop for the dogs. I think that's an example right there of what the defensive coaches were talking about at Mississippi State. If you don't get to Newton, he's got a half time and he's accurate, he'll get the receiver the ball. Mississippi State has to do a good job of keeping the football in front of them. If they're going to play big zones defensively, they can go attack. Down on the field for Auburn is their star left tackle, Lee Zimba. Zimba making his 40th start tonight. Basically been a starter since he arrived from Rogers, Arkansas. He is one of the leaders on that veteran Auburn offensive line. He's a guy that tested the NFL market last season, thought he might decide to go pro. You heard a lot of rumors that he could get selected in the second round of last year's NFL draft. He decided to come back this year. They cannot afford to lose him. They're looking at Zemba. We'll give you an update on his condition when we come back from Starkville. Back in Starkville, Auburn and Mississippi State tied at seven on the Tigers sideline. They are attending to their star left tackle, Lee Zimba. Three springs ago, I spent time watching Zimba, and he is a fantastic football player. You can't really see anything that he did right there to his leg. Gets up to run, and it's just like a, you know, one of those crazy deals. But this is a very good football player that they can uh, ill afford to lose. It started now after tonight, 40 consecutive games. Brandon Mosley checking in, and instead, Mosley, the 6'6", 299-pound junior from Jefferson, Georgia. Newton to throw it. Feels a little heat. Cam's got some room, and he is hit hard, but not before he picks up the first down. Cameron Newton getting it down to the 25 and converting another third down with his legs. The biggest benefit of a mobile quarterback is his ability to move the chains on critical downs. On third down, if it's not open downfield, he'll just tuck it. Who's going to tackle a 250-pound quarterback one-on-one? -on -one? But Manny Diaz made it clear, the defensive coordinator, will give up the third and six conversions. We can't give up the 60, 50, 40-yard touchdown runs. Quarterback draw. He may give up one here as Newton crashes inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Tigers. 17 yards on the carry before Whitley knocked him over. Yeah, you, you see the right guard, Byron Isom, when he pulls around here. You got the fullback running up in there, Smith. When you have traffic like that, Jesse, I mean, you might be able to go back out and do that. Yeah, well, when I was playing quarterback, if I got into the secondary, I was sliding. <laughs> you see Cam Newton, he's just running guys over. He's by far the biggest player on the field once he's into that area. A peek at Manny Diaz, the new defensive coordinator here. Football is on the ground. Newton trying to get it back, and Cameron does. A missed exchange between Newton and Mario Fannin, and the scramble by Newton saves Auburn from disaster in the red zone. A loss of four. It's amazing how many problems we've seen around the country early this year with the quarterback center exchange. Florida had a lot of issues. North Carolina gave up a big safety. Here already, yeah. Auburn, they're having problems QB running back and stuff. Yeah, that's just that read right there. Yeah. Newton didn't want to give it up. Mm -hmm. Ball carrier wanted it. Couldn't come to an agreement. Second and goal. Heat coming. Got a little screen set up. Terrell Zachary, he put it on the ground and grabbed it. There's a flag flying. It was thrown in the direction of Mike Berry, the left guard. Terrell Zachary was the guy who made the catch. And Auburn, after getting it inside the 10, had a loss on the fumble, and now it backed up on the penalty. Gene Chizik told us he wanted more 9 and 10 play, yard, 10 play drives. I'm not sure he wanted it this way. Block in the back, offense number 66. A penalty's declined. Third down. So Diaz and Mullen will take their chances. Auburn looking at a goal-to-go -go situation, and rather than giving them two plays, they're going to try to give them one from just inside the 13-yard line. It'll be third down. Mullen exhorting the crowd. Tigers needing to get it to the end zone. Blitz coming. Newton, a dart, touchdown, Auburn! Darvin Adams. You want to see some arm strength? How about that Pete that Newton shot in there?
running back Mario Fannin allows Cameron Newton to get this football off. Watch the tailback number 27 slide over, pick up the free defender, boom! And that allows Cam Newton to stand tall in the pocket and deliver the strike. Newton, seven of eight, 83 yards, a couple of touchdown passes, and Auburn has regained the lead. The Mississippi State elects not to move the Tigers back 10, and Newton makes them pay. Auburn up 14-7. Wes Byram kicking off after the Auburn touchdown. Chad Bumpus has it for the dogs. Bumpus trying to get back to the 20, and he won't even make it to the 15. Excellent special teams coverage by the Tigers. Chris Ralph coming back in the game. I like that, Jesse. You know what? I, I, you gave Russell a shot at it and lathered him up. But Single back is Hanrahan. Ralph keeps it on the option. Chris Ralph with a good gain. He'll have a first down out close to the 24-yard line. And Ralph pausing momentarily after getting... Hit by Darren Bates, he picked up 12. Chris Ralph is from Montgomery, Alabama. The coaching staff told us he's had big eyes all week in practice. He's been anticipating this game as the team he grew up watching. Again on the option, and Hanrahan, keep it, he gets up across the 30. You know, Ralph, we were talking to him about how many people that he had, friends, family, coming to the game. And he just kept naming them. My parents, my sister, my friends. He has at least eight here. Sticking with the option, big hole up the middle, and it's Patrick Hanrahan, the senior, also a native of the state of Alabama from Springville. He picks up 13. Well, Ralph will surely enjoy this football game if his offensive line continues to open holes like that and makes the job easier for him. Triple Roof. option under, under center. Well, yeah, they did not show a lot of that last week in a win against Memphis. It's a nice job now adding a different element to confuse Auburn's defense. This time, fumbled center quarterback exchange. It looked as if Auburn got it. And I believe they did. Second turnover in a row for Mississippi State. This one on the center quarterback exchange, and Auburn will have great field position. I think this is one of the themes early in the college football season as teams struggling with the basic mechanics of the center QB exchange. And by the way, look who falls on that football. Of course. It's fairly. You know, some of that, Jesse, is that you've got, you know, one play, it's a shotgun. The next time the quarterback's under center, it's, I mean, there's a lot of movement going around, and the ball just never got up in the hands of Ralph. So what is that now for Fairley? That's a fumble recovery, an interception, yep. two sacks? No, a half a sack. Okay, so half a sack and? And at least three tackles. Marty Aronoff working on that. Unbelievable. And a lot of pressure. You bet. So it's first and ten after the turnover. Newton on the option. McCaleb. Ooh. Ooh. Short pickup for Ontario McCaleb. Yeah. Brunel McPhee, Emmanuel Gatling, who's been active tonight, making the stop. Yeah, this is one of those series Emmanuel here for Gatling, Mississippi State. Auburn is, is starting to feel it, right? Yeah. You know, you, defense better step up. Play gains two, second down. And the Tigers looking at second and eight. Newton. Feeling a little heat, still on his feet. Cameron Newton eludes one, runs over another, and it looks as if he'll have enough for the first down. Gatling on the stop. Let's check in with Jen Brown. Thanks, guys. I have an injury update of left tackle Lee Zimba. I watched him, we saw him kind of be carried off the field. They evaluated him on the sideline. They were checking out what looks like his right knee. He will not be returning to the game at this point. They are going to evaluate him at halftime to determine whether or not he can return. Chris. All right, Jen. McCaleb. Lots of running room for the speedy Ontario McCaleb, and he gets it into the Mississippi State red zone. 18-yard line. Big pickup for McCaleb of 15. Uh, his replacement, Brandon Mosley, has got a big job to fill there, 75. Watch the left side of the line of scrimmage coming down with block caves. Everybody down inside to get the corner for the back. It's two drives in a row now. Mississippi State had momentum driving the football. They turned it over, and Auburn so far has been able to capitalize. Wildcat formation, Cody Burns taking the snap. Burns going to throw it for Cameron Newton and the former quarterback who lost out in the competition last year to Chris Todd. 
trying to throw a touchdown pass to Cameron Newton. You know, we were talking to Gus Malzahn earlier this week about Cody Burns, who is an Arkansas native as Malzahn is, and he said it was one of the hardest things he'd ever had to do in coaching was to tell Burns he'd been beaten out for the quarterback spot. Cody Burns played at Northside High School. That was a rival of Gus Malzahn when he was at Springdale in Arkansas. He said he's very competitive, but he's a leader, and he's taken on and accepted his responsibility at wideout now. Second and ten after the incompletion from Burns. Newton, quarterback draw, opens right up the middle, and he'll be down to about the 11. A.J. Wright able to get the big quarterback on the ground. It'll be third down. Wearing number two, it's easy to compare Cam Newton to Terrell Pryor. Absolutely. But there's a major difference between these two football players that you can noticeably see, and that's that Newton will lower his shoulder and bring the wood. And that's why Gus Malzahn is not afraid to dial up run plays specifically for Cam Newton to carry the ball. Designed runs. Gus Malzahn told us, I've never coached a quarterback like this before. He's got different elements. He provides different intangibles that allow me to open my playbook in different ways I've never been able to do. Newton's carried it eight times for 50 yards tonight and converted three first downs. So Auburn will call the timeout, talk it over, looking at a third down and four inside the state 15. Tigers up 14 to seven and on the move. Ball at the Mississippi State 12. A third and four, staring at Cam Newton and the Tigers. Last time they were in this neighborhood, they had a third and goal from the 13, and Newton fired a dart to Darvin Adams for a touchdown. Newton has been very adept at picking up third downs and a fourth down with his feet, as well as his arm. Flag flying, Newton running, Newton a first down to the five, but let's see what the flag is. It's on the ground at the 17-yard line. The Mississippi State is having an awful time dealing with the quarterback runs. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, Auburn will have to do it five yards farther away. Didn't get lined up properly. Gus Malzahn, you know, five of his 14 games at this school has produced over 500 yards. I mean, the previous 40 games, they had not gotten to that point. Zero of that, right? No 500 yards. Zilch. So he knows how to get players into position to be successful. Now it's up to... Mississippi State's defensive coaches, they got to figure out a way to stop that quarterback run. Third down. Here comes another pressure look by Mississippi State. Pretty long eight for the Tigers. Newton. Pressure coming, wants to throw the screen. State has it snuffed out. And Cameron Newton just gets rid of it. Josh Boyd was back there and avoiding the big sack, avoiding the turnover, pretty a heady play by Newton. This is where Mississippi State shines on defense. Third down, they move a lot of guys around in the box, trying to confuse the quarterback and the offensive line in terms of who they're blocking. I, I thought that Chris White, number 50, the linebacker, you saw him pointing to the left side, wide side of the field. He heard the call, recognized what the play was going to be, and they were there for it. Wes Byram attempting a 34-yard field goal. He has made eight consecutive field goals dating back to last year. And you can make it nine. And Auburn takes advantage of the turnover. They had a field goal, and the Tigers are up 17-7 in the second. Here's Aubie looking in the background. Wes Byram prepares to kick it away for the Tigers. Drive Leon Berry to his goal line. Berry across the 20, and he gets stuck. That is the freshman Craig Sanders. Affleck. The answer to tonight's Affleck trivia question, what team nickname most common among FBS schools? Got a quick guess? Tigers, you'd be right. Auburn, Clemson, LSU, Memphis, and Missouri, all Tigers. Bulldogs coming in second place with four. I've heard if you count all of college football together, Every division, the answer is Eagles. 
I'm glad you were really paying attention in the meeting. 55 schools. Excellent memory by you. Chris Ralph. Scrambling Ralph's got a little room. The Mississippi State quarterback is going to be about a yard short of the first down. Almost in every game that I watched last weekend, the absence of a quarterback's ability to run was real noticeable. Texas and Florida, they lost their guys that could run. Look what Denard Robinson did for Michigan. These running quarterbacks, the pressure it puts on a defense is just, you can't account for the guy. Second and one, Ralph riding Ladarius Perkins. He is the fastest Bulldog and he's across the 40 yard line. Nifty feet through traffic for the young back. Probably the fastest player on this football team. Dan Mullen's going to find ways to get the speed, the football, right here doing a nice job with his vision, being patient, and then getting north-south. Oh, well, Mullen, one of the top young offensive minds in the game. Worked with Urban Meyer at Florida for a number of years, and also at Utah, Tudor Tebow and Alex Smith. Working with a two-quarterback system here at Mississippi State. Seeing more of Chris Ralph tonight. Perkins has it again, but Darius is going absolutely nowhere. El Toro Freeman, the bull. El Toro with the stop. I think they'll have a two-quarterback system for a while, but at some point you, you get out to where you're going to have a quarterback. I think no matter who's in there, Craig, ball security has to be a premium now for Mississippi State. The last two drives, they've turned it over. That's led directly to 10 Auburn points. Ralph on second and long. Holding it a long time, now firing a wide open Chad Bumpus, but he can't hold it, ruled incomplete. Bumpus had some room in the middle of the field in that Auburn secondary, but Ralph not quite on the money. But he knew where to go with the ball, right? He kept waiting on the post to get there and gave the patience, and Bumpus with the throw just to throw a little bit off. Well, this is an offense that tries to get Chad Bumpus and Brandon Heavens, two slot receivers lined up against bigger linebackers and safeties on that play, big zone coverage. Bumpus able to find the open field, but not able to throw an accurate football. Third down for Ralph. Good protection, ball swatted away. It'll be fourth down. Zach Clayton with the deflection for the Tigers. So the Auburn defense rising up here and now with two and a half minutes to go, Auburn won the toss, elected to take the ball, but they do have a chance to put another one, another score on the board before Mississippi State gets it to open the second half. And if the Tigers could do that, then the Bulldogs would certainly be in dire straits. Keith Hutchins to Punted away from Mississippi State. When Darius Carr deep for the Tigers. Oh, rugby style. Carr is going to let it hit. It'll roll inside and he touched at it about the 14 yard line. Let's check in in the studio with John Saunders. All right, John, I don't really know what's so different about Dr. Lou laying down the law. He pretty much does it to me every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Quarterback Cameron Newton has an opportunity here to grow from last week. He really struggled with his time clock management late in the first half against Memphis. They missed an opportunity to hit a field goal. They have two timeouts left. Let's see if he can manage a two-minute drive, put his team in scoring position. Auburn has it at 14. Run to the inside. Well, from my, Caleb. from my standpoint, I, I think Cam Newton's answered the question for me. Can he, is he going to be real on the field? Absolutely. Uh, he's going to do nothing but get better week in and week out. I, I'm impressed so far with his running ability. I don't know if I've seen enough yet throwing the football downfield. The only time he's really pushed the football deep downfield tonight, it's been intercepted. So the jury's still out to me whether this guy can do it through the air in this conference. Clock boy, is boy, I'm running. Impressed, though. I'm impressed. Very physically gifted. Clock is winding. Auburn was very conservative the last time with Newton when they had the ball inside their own 20. That was inside the five. 
run it again. McCaleb's got some running room. Ontario McCaleb is dragged down by Nico Whitley, who had the interception earlier in the half. So a little running room after the 11-yard pickup, and now let's see if Auburn really picks up the pace and gets a little more aggressive with the play calling now that they were able to pick up a first down on the ground. Mario Fannin has checked in for the Tigers. The give is to Fannin. Little wraparound draw, Fannin across the 35. He is dragged down, a little bit short of the first down. Emmanuel Gatling with another tackle. Pickup of nine for Fannin. Gus Malzahn has so many different plays, so much they can do to create the eye candy that makes the defense fall asleep over there. If Newton takes a shot, instead he'll run it himself. Cameron Newton has the first down, and he is knocked down at the 45. Whitley again. Among those on the stop, another nine-yard pickup for Cameron Newton. <laughs> now timeout called with 41 seconds remaining in the half. Here is Lee Zimba, the starting left tackle for the Tigers, who was injured in the first half. Jen Brown reporting earlier it appeared to be an injury to his right knee. Didn't return immediately, and they're going to check him out at the half. Zimba is a, is a kid whose parents both went to Auburn. He was an Auburn kid, though. He was from Arkansas. The recruiting process was pretty much... Pretty much a, a done deal once the Tigers offered, and he has been a stalwart in that offensive line for his entire career, now making his 40th consecutive start tonight. So after the timeout, Auburn's picked up a couple of first downs on the ground. Cam Newton has run for five of them tonight. See what Gus Malzahn has dialed up. Newton is going to throw it, and he does push it down the field, and he was looking for Emery Blake, who caught the first touchdown pass of the night, and Whitley was on the coverage. Not complete, but definitely puts the fear in there. And for Lee Zimba, you know, I think we all hope that he does and is able to come back and play. But Brandon Mosley, his replacement there, 75, has done a nice job. We haven't seen his guy making plays. Second and 10 after the incompletion. Newton again on that wraparound draw. McCaleb has it and he has running room. Ontario McCaleb was about an inch or two away from being one-on-one -on -one with one man to beat. Corey Broomfield made the stop after the pickup of 12. The risk you take when you force pressure is sometimes slow developing plays like draws or screens can run right by you. Gus Malzahn again with the perfect play dialed up. Newton, quick fire incomplete, looking for Blake again. I think if you're Auburn right now, you're trying to get into or around the 30-yard line to allow West Bynum a makeable 47-yard field goal here. I think that'd be a goal right now for Cam Newton. Last week, at the, the, the end of that second quarter, they had 17 seconds to go. So this is in that same range of clock management for Newton. Tigers do have a timeout left. Byron, by the way, is career-long, a 52-yarder, so he'd have a shot if they could get it to the 35. Newton getting heat. Don't want to take the sack here. Cam, the pass knocked down 10 seconds. Now officially nine seconds remaining in the first half. Denias Timms making the play for Mississippi State. Rush three and drop eight and try to cover everybody up and that time, nice job, pressure coming on the outside. Ferguson and these guys putting pressure in there, so Nick Bell's in there now, 36, so fresh bodies on that D-line. Newton has missed his last four pass attempts. Noise coming. Bulldogs aren't. They'll keep it on the ground with McCaleb, and he's knocked down at the 39-yard line. Auburn does have a timeout. which apparently they will not use. That is the half. So perhaps a curious bit of end of the half play calling by Malzahn being very conservative with the new quarterback despite his immense physical gifts. But as it is, Auburn's still very productive. 
You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Starkville, Mississippi, the site. Davis Wade Stadium at Scott Field. Auburn with a 17-7 lead on the Bulldogs at halftime. Just about to get set to start the third quarter. Reese Davis along with Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jen Brown. First half, Auburn very productive at times. Sort of the Home Depot coaching adjustment. <laughs> you got to keep number 90 out of the backfield if you're in Mississippi State. You know, when I had to go back and look at my notes again, I was like, is this really a good offensive line at Mississippi State? This is the team last year that crushed people on the ground. So maybe, Jesse, you get back to running it because surely you can't get away from him when you go with the ball on the other side. You're right, Craig. Mississippi State has to find a way to neutralize Auburn defensive tackle Chris Fairley, whether he's been in the backfield messing up quarterbacks, running backs, dropping in the zone blitz schemes, intercepting passes, or falling on fumbles. Mississippi State has to find a way to keep him uninvolved. And if that means taking a center and a guard, a guard tackle, cut blocking him or getting a back involved, you got to find a way offensively. What number was Ndamukong Sue last year? <laughs> uh, I think he was 93. But in the first half, uh, Nick Fairley looked a lot like him. He was all over the place with three tackles, half a sack. He intercepted a pass and covered a fumble and generally wrecked the first half for Dan Mullen's team. Fairley. A 6'5", 298 pound junior out of Mobile, Alabama. The guy that the coaches believe if he continues to bring that type of intensity, he can be a dominant, big time, all-conference type of performer on that defensive line. He certainly did it in the first half. Auburn got the ball to start the game. They'll kick it away and Mississippi State really needs to get a little offense going. While they came up with a stop late in the half, they've had a lot of trouble containing Cameron Newton. You consider right now for Mississippi State on this drive, big to go find points. Mississippi State has only scored seven points in tonight's ball game, and that's because they were able to recover a fumble punt inside Auburn's red zone. They gotta put a drive together, and it's gotta start now. Second half is underway from Starkville. It will be Leon Berry returning the kickoff for the Bulldogs. Berry's got a little seam, and he'll get across the 35. Good starting field position for the Bulldogs. Let's check in with Jen Brown. Thanks, guys. I talked to Coach Shizik at, after the half and asked him what he needed to do on offense and defense to really get this team going. They're only up at 17. By seven, um, they have 17 at the half, excuse me. He says they need to have sustained drives on offense, that they can't keep on getting these penalties that are pulling them from getting seven points, and they're only ending up with three. Now, I did talk to him about defense. He said they need to get the ball, and they need to be off the field on defense. Guys? All right, Jen, so Mississippi State will start first, and let's see how much they try to run it at the Tigers. Option. Chris Ralph cut it back inside and paid for it. Jonathan Evans was there, Josh Bynes as well. Now they averaged five yards of carry last week, but that wasn't Auburn, right? And you right. know what? And they averaged 227 a game last year. Don't shy away from it. You know, it's interesting. If you have to take two players to block Nick Fairley, that big defensive tackle, that frees up linebackers to roam around unblocked as well. It's a pick your poison dilemma right now if you're Mississippi State up front on the offensive line. They haven't really found a back that can move the pile as Anthony Dixon did last year either. Second and nine. Ralph over the middle. Has his man. It's Ballard out of the backfield for the catch into Auburn territory. Twenty-four yards on the pickup. Out of the backfield, and this is a nice job of Ballard coming right through. Linebackers looking hard at the running game. Beautiful job of getting the ball to him. But if it's a better throw by Chris Ralph and he's able to put it over the left inside shoulder, I think Ballard's still running yeah, right now I agree. for a touchdown. But backing him up just a little bit, getting the pass to him. Ralph, quick to Bumpus. Bumpus. The shifty receiver, Ted Bumpus, marked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Chris Smith got a good block on the eight-yard pickup. Well, we saw last week, Jesse, that, that at times, Ralph was not accurate. You know, maybe they're trying to get his confidence and accuracy. But there's no it. question. They started the game with short completions, easy throws. They're starting the second half to allow him to get back into this rhythm, and right now it's working. Bulldogs on the move, a second and short. Two.
Play clock inside 10. Ralph. Quick out complete. First down. The grab by Chris Smith, who had the good block on the previous play, rewarded with the ball this time. The advantage of having a quarterback who's mobile like Chris Ralph, defenses are afraid to send pressure. You don't want to get gashed on a quarterback run play, so that opens up some windows in this passing game. Ralph, the most experienced quarterback in Mississippi State. We're in the hard count. We've only seen Tyler Russell briefly in this game. Low snap, a little trouble on it, and Nick Fairley just threw down Robert Elliott for fun, but Ralph, Ralph ended up keeping it after the near botch and the handoff in the backfield. <laughs> well, uh, you know, this, these, now what are we seeing? Two, maybe three exchanges that have not been good from the center to the quarterback. Zach Clayton is back there. <laughs> Fairley just sorting them out until he finds the one with the ball. On the option, Ralph inside the 25 and down to the 20. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Aaron Savage, the sixth year safety for Auburn, making the stop. It's not very often you see a football game with two quarterbacks as big as Cameron Newton and Chris Ralph running with so much ability. That's the first time I've seen Ralph show me that he has the speed to run like that. So, I, hey, let it go. Cut it loose. And he's 240 pounds. Ish. <laughs> Maybe a little more. <laughs> yeah, I think we have easily have 500 pounds of quarterback here tonight between Ralph and Newton. <laughs> Ralph under center on the third and one. Going to go up top to throw it, and he throws it to his fullback, Patrick Hanrahan. Made a very nice catch. It'll be enough for the first down. And Savage, who has missed the last two seasons, just 08 with a knee, 09 with an Achilles. Here to make another tackle for the Tigers. Another sign you've got the ability and the potential at quarterback. Getting your feet around. Knowing you're going to get hit, but get rid of the football. But a great catch by the fullback, Patrick Hanahan, to kind of reach up over his shoulders to tuck that in. This has been a very impressive drive by Mississippi State now to start the second half. Ralph's hit all four of his passes. Eighth play of the drive coming. The reverse. Bumpus has it. One man to beat. And Savage gets him out of bounds. Been setting that up for a while, Jeff. Here's the evolution of this offense. Dan Mullen's been showing you speed option, speed option, getting the flow of the defense going one way, and all of a sudden, whoop, little reverse to the receiver. Well, and number 90, Nick Fairley, original play side, right where the pitch went to. He was in the backyard, backfield, three yards. So you've got a very aggressive front right now, and I think that the play calling has taken advantage of Auburn's front seven getting after it. On second down and five, State's empty the backfield. And here comes Ballard. Quick pass again. Bumpus has it again. Gets a good block. Bumpus headed for the pylon, but he's knocked out of bounds just short by Demond Washington. Leon Berry and Chris Smith, an excellent job paving the way for Bumpus. And that receiver has to have the confidence. Bumpus has to have the confidence that his receiving teammate is going to make this block. Uh, defensive coordinator Ted Roof for Auburn told us that last week the DBs were getting Velcro to wide receivers, blocking them on this play right here. A lot of white jerseys on the ground, and that allows Bumpus to use that speed to get outside. The, the secondary of Auburn has to find ways to shed these receivers blocking them so they can make tackles in space. Otherwise, Mississippi State will continue to take advantage of that. First and goal inside the three. Ralph is five for five on the drive in Mississippi State. A little confusion on the play call in the first time out of the half. They have to burn a timeout. But you don't, you don't want to make a mistake here. An opportunity to get back in it. Opening drive of the second half. Bulldogs have a first and goal. Mississippi State has a first and goal from the Auburn two, opening drive, second half. Chris Ralph, jump pass, Tebow West. Oh, he dropped it! He had Marcus Green for the touchdown, and Green, it floated up there like a balloon, and he just couldn't haul it in. A great call, Tebow West. <laughs> Can't finish the playoff, though. The hardest ball in the world to catch. 
Marcus Green, usually reliable, a guy on the Mackey Award candidate list. That won't prop him up the ladder. In fairness to Green, I, I think he was anticipating this ball to, to be a little bit more of a line drive. Neither punters had the hang time that that pass had tonight. But you still got to catch it. Yes, indeed. Dogs keep it on the ground. Mick Ballard stopped just short of the goal line. It'll be third and goal. You know, and after Green bobbled that one too, he was probably fortunate that Aaron Savage didn't get the deflection and Very stuff good. out the drive for Auburn. At uh, that time I watched big Gabe Jackson, 61 over there, 305 pounds. He got a little push. Uh, there's no surprise right now. If I'm Mississippi State, this thing is being pounded right up the middle. Power football. Ballard's the tailback. Ballard into the end zone. The Bulldogs have opened the second half with a touchdown drive. Game on in the SEC on a Thursday night, gentlemen. John Broccoli for the extra point. Splendid play calling by Dan Mullen. Les Kenning and the offensive staff. And the extra point is true. And now Gene Chizik's team will have an opportunity. And we'll see what old Gus Malzahn can dial up when you come back. <laughs> Mississippi State going onside kick. And the Bulldogs have it. Dan Mullen channeling his inner Sean Payton and going with the onside kick. Dan Mullen feels that he had the energy and the momentum back on his sideline. He wants to keep him in an outstanding gutsy call. It's the first game in conference play, and this is how you go out and take a game. They understand they got that crowd moving behind them right now, don't they? And here's the risk. You do not execute this. Now you give Cameron Newton the football back deep in your own end. What a call in the first division game of the season for Dan Mullen. So Ralph and company back to work. Chris Ralph up top, it's too high and almost picked off by Zach Etheridge. Bump has got a hand on it, but Etheridge, who is returning from a very serious neck injury a year ago, landed hard and a little bit slow to get up. It appears to be just a cramp. And he'll check on Zach Etheridge. Etheridge in the game against Ole Miss last year cracked a vertebra the c5 vertebra while making a tackle against the rebels in a game against auburn he started 33 consecutive games before being hurt on this play he also tore ligaments in his neck and for a while it was uncertain how much mobility zach would have and then once he regained the mobility the question became would he play football again and for Etheridge, there was never a question now the doctors told him Nobody had ever had this type of injury and come back in one year. Here's Zach Etheridge is back on the football field in less than a year, making an impact. And thankfully, great to see him running off. It appeared to be, from our vantage point, just a cramp. He is certainly a leader in that Auburn secondary. And Gene Chizik, Ted Roof both said it was absolutely chilling last week in Auburn when they announced his name in the starting lineup and the roar that he got from the Tiger faithful. Second down after the incomplete pass from Ralph. Chris going to throw it again, and this one is wide of the target. He was looking for Robert Elliott. Jen Brown, you a little bit more on a Zach Etheridge's return. Thanks. You guys were talking about his determination and his fire. And interestingly enough, I talked to the trainer, Clark Pearson, before the game about his rehab. And he said the most amazing thing was this guy's determination. He came in three, four times a day to go through all of the strength and flexibility to build up his neck muscles. And he said that is the reason why this guy is on the field, is his determination, which he's not really seen in a player that much. Jen, he's certainly been... An inspiration. Ralph bobbled the snap and got it out of there quickly and threw it low. 
The three errant passes after the recovery of the onside kick from Chris Rowe. Well, here's a Mississippi State offense that has had a lot of success tonight running the football. You get a great call by Dan Mullen, you get the onside kick, and you come out and you throw it three times. And now you're punting the football right back. Well, I tell you, that, that's one of those where, you know, it's maybe easy to second guess, guess from up here, but they certainly didn't take advantage of a great opportunity. You know, that Auburn defense had been on the field for 12 plays in the previous drive, and they give them a three and out. Good stand from the Tiger defense. Pressure coming from Auburn. Hutchins gets it out of there. And Darius Carr makes the fair catch. He muffed one earlier tonight to set up a state score. Back in Starkville, Mississippi State back in the game. Second half touchdown is now 17-14. Auburn and the Bulldogs very aggressive in their approach, Craig. And they had to be, right? I mean, this was a team that came out of the locker room down 17-7. The coaching adjustments in here, you had a guy up front, Nick Fairley, that was dominating the offensive line. So you go with a little misdirection, you do a little Team OS work in the end zone there. Did warp it, they come right back, Jesse. The coaches had to somehow slow down Auburn's defense. The one word everybody associates with Dan Mullen here at Mississippi State is excitement. It's not just recruiting. It's not just getting the fans involved here, but it's the play calling as well. Auburn's first snap from scrimmage in the second half. Over seven and a half minutes into the quarter. Ontario McCaleb hunts and picks his way. Picks up about three, K.J. Wright on the stop. You know what, now, you, you make a point there, Reese. first snap, so they've been sitting over there, got to get back into rhythm, and that gives this defense a chance to pin their ears back. No question. And it's tough for a quarterback when you've been on the sidelines for almost eight minutes. you got to come out, get going, get revved up. The freshman, Michael Dyer, hasn't had many carries tonight. He gets across the 20-yard line. He'll be close to the first down, stopped by Emmanuel Gatling. We'll see exactly where they spot it. Uh, where they're walking now will be a little short. Now they're, now they're moving it up. Malzahn wanting to go quickly. Officials trying to determine where to spot the ball. It'll be third and a very short one for Auburn. But they haven't been quick and fast as they are known to be in this football game tonight. Base tempo is supposed to be two-minute drill, Craig, and we really haven't seen a lot of that. And now Newton is completely confused, and he has to use the timeout, or maybe it was McCaleb. The cowbells were ringing. Not supposed to do that. <laughs> but they're waiting to snap. That's fine, a no-no. Fine, no. fine, fine, The people from the conference are listening. <laughs> Third and one for the Tigers. I hear a few cowbells. So does Cam Newton, apparently. It's rocking. Down on Scott Field. Newton. Again, the first down. Big Cameron Newton plowing his way up to the 28-yard line. Chris White gets him down, but another conversion. His sixth first down rushing tonight. It's just a different element that this Auburn offense now has with such a big quarterback. It's like having a bruising short yardage goal line tailback in the backfield every snap. An even bigger Tim Tebow. Their, their challenge is going to be at Auburn. How many times do you want to let this guy be hit? The freshman Dyer has it. Dyer gets across the 30. Very nearly squirted through there. Let's check in with Jen Brown. <laughs> You guys were talking about the cowbells. I have to tell you, being down here, it is so loud. They just announced the attendance. There's 54,806 people. It's the fourth straight sellout. And I'm going to tell you, I think all 54,000 of those people have a cowbell because my ears will be ringing tonight. <laughs> so, some of them have two, Jen. One for each hand. <laughs> well, that one guy had three. <laughs> Newton. Oh! Almost picked up and taken back. Auburn was trying to set up the screen, and Corey Broomfield, who was second in the SEC with six interceptions last year, almost housed it. This is called reading the play, knowing what's coming. Broomfield, an all SEC freshman last year. Oh, right there to make the play. It's a great job of route recognition and being aggressive. He beat his wide receiver to the football. If he's able to pluck that out of the air, that's a house call six. Now does Malzahn have a counter for him if he gambles too much? Third down again. 
Newton. Plenty of time. Down the middle, Darvin Adams, who had a touchdown catch earlier, a first down, and Newton, after missing his previous five, fires a dart for 18. Mississippi State likes to bring pressure on third down, but because Auburn's been able to handle it all night long, now they decide to lay back. They only bring three. Look at all the time Cam Newton has to complete that. The old game, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. <laughs> Dyer's got it. Freshman. Picks up one. He was the number one running back in the country, according to the ESPNU 150. It reminds me a lot of Maurice Jones Drew from Jacksonville, the Jaguars. You know what? He's five foot nine, but he's 215 pounds. He's got short little legs, but he's a load to bring down. He just keeps that low center gravity. Tough guy to tackle. Hasn't had the ball a lot tonight, but the senior at Little Rock Christian, over 2,500 yards and 31 touchdowns a year ago. Second and nine, facing Newton and the Auburn offense. Newton, again, it's Adams with the catch. Adams working on Jonathan Banks. You know, w just watching Newton and how he's running this offense and the composure that he has, Gus Malzahn has done an unbelievable job of preparing him to execute the offense, and he's got the defense. The defense thinks they know what they're doing over there, but Malzahn has told Newton, we got an answer to everything they can bring. Cam Newton is very dialed in. That was a great job on that play of, of the Bulldogs disguising their coverage. They rolled the safeties, but Newton knew immediately where he wanted to go and made an easy completion. Another third down. Auburn, five for nine, and now six for 10 as Newton runs for another first down. Chris White hit him hard, but the big fella moves to change for the Tigers. And I'll show you what I'm talking about on that last play of coverage by Mississippi State. They try to roll the safeties. They try to confuse Cam Newton. You're going to get a roll. Safety up here, safety back here, and this corner is just going to drop off. Cam Newton immediately dissects the defense, and one, two, three, ball comes out on time. That's an easy completion. Newton's hit 9 of 15 on the night. And now a second timeout that Newton has to burn in the third quarter in a three-point game. You never know when you might need those. Where was he in the recruiting rankings? <laughs> Newton on the scramble. Five times last week on called pass plays, Newton turned them into positive runs, and he did so again there. Uh, you know, we're going to show you here, they don't contain, nor do they pressure the quarterback, Newton, this time. So you've got him going back. Everybody falls to the middle of the field, and Newton, with his legs and his vision, Jesse, he's he, pretty decisive. It's, it's so hard, even if you do have him contained, just to tackle him with, with one body. If you don't get a couple hats around him, you're not going to bring him down. Newton has run for 73 tonight. Mario Fannin has returned to the backfield for the Tigers. Fannin has it. Trying to bounce it outside. Mario's still on his feet, but he's going the wrong way. And there is a host of Maroon to swallow him up. First guy there was Maurice Langston, and Michael Hunt wasn't far behind. A loss of six. Dan Mullen said he wants his defense, he wants his football team to be excited about playing, to get up with swagger, get jacked up after you make a play. And he wants them to be fresh in this game. Right after that last snap, Mississippi State underwent a mass substitution. They completely changed and replaced the entire defensive line and a few linebackers. These guys are fresh right now. Another third down opportunity, but this one a long one for the Tigers. On this drive, Newton has run for a couple of first downs on third and passed for another. He showed him a little eye candy. Cameron's in trouble. Jonathan Banks coming from the secondary. Andy Diaz dialed up a blitz at work, but there is a flag down. We're going to get an illegal shift on the Tigers. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving, failure to get set. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. 
in my opinion, the last two defensive plays, Mississippi State said, we're going to come at you hard. We're not going to worry about who you are. And they pinned their ears back, and they came. And because they were fresh, they were able to play 100 miles an hour. You saw the speed differential right there on the sack. Auburn getting set to punt it away. That's Diaz's calling card as a coordinator at Middle Tennessee last year. They were second in the nation in tackles for loss and sixth in sacks. Tigers get it out of there quickly, and Shoemaker went down, but I believe it was his own man who cut his feet out from under in the fair catch from Bumpus at the 11. And Mississippi State will be 89 yards away after the 41-yard kick. Tyler Russell has returned to quarterback for the Bulldogs. And there he is Perkins, the fastest man on the team. He's knocked down by El Toro Freeman. All of those games, part of Monster Saturday. I got a chance to talk to Brian Kelly this week, and he was talking about how he wanted his fighting Irish team when they have an opportunity, when they have a team down, as they did Purdue last week, step on the throat. You see, both those teams really need to follow it up with 2-0. A great slate of games all across the country. Loss of one on the run by Perkins, and now Russell deep in his own territory. Easy pass to Bumpus. Bumpus has got good speed and gets out close to the 20-yard line. I believe he's going to be about a yard short of the first down. It's a difficult uh, situation to come into as a freshman quarterback. Be backed up in your own end. You're down this game by three. But Tyler Russell told us, and the coaching staff believes that not starting a game for a young quarterback can help their confidence grow because you get a chance to watch what the defense is doing on the sidelines. You can talk to your coaching staff about play calling. It allows you to kind of get into the ease of the game easier. Russell tried the hard count. Auburn didn't bite. This is the third one. Tigers trying to get off the field and get it back. Freeman up in there, and here he comes. Russell rolls away from pressure, fires in, comes Lee. Bumpus couldn't quite haul it in, so it'll bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, this is a really tough situation for Mississippi State because they're running the ball so well, and then you get back and you take a shotgun snap. The receiver, Jesse, has to finish the play. We'll say this. They're certainly running the football better than they are throwing it. Having said that, there have been times tonight we've seen a lot of wide-open maroon jerseys around the field, and these quarterbacks have not been overly accurate. But, but you would say that ball should have been caught. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Heath Hutchins back to point, punted away for Mississippi State. Probably saw Russell because of how inaccurate Ralph was in that drive immediately following the onside kick. A rugby look, and Hutchins booms one out of there. Drives Carr back inside his 30. Now Quindarius has a little running room, and it closes down. Just across the 35. 53-yard punt, 11-yard return for Quindarius Carr. Ontario McCaleb. Caleb with a very short game. Chris White on the stop as we head down toward a half minute to go in the third quarter in Starkville. A lot of action in that third quarter as Mississippi State pulling back into it. Trailing the 21st ranked Tigers by three. Reverse look. Newton still has it. He's going to run with it again. Newton, White. White chases him out of bounds, but it's another first down running for Cameron Newton. You've got linemen. The right guard pulled and went to the left side. That means the linebackers are seeing one thing. I mean, there are so many folks moving around, Jesse, that defense. It's all that eye candy that we talk about when you mention Gus Malzahn's offense. You need great eye discipline on defense to know where the football is and keep your keys. If Newton gets his snap off, and he will not before the end of the third quarter. We'll start the final period in Starkville. Auburn barely in state territory trying to add to its lead. Start of the fourth quarter in Starkville. Auburn on the road, clinging to a three-point lead, and the Tigers went down to rile up their faithful. In the corner of Davis Wade Stadium at Scott Field, a lot of orange and blue over there, making noise, and Auburn trying to extend its lead. A first and 10 for the Tigers just across the 50. 
Cameron Newton dumps it off underneath. Mario Fannin has it, has a first down, and he'll be knocked down at the state 35. I love the decision by Cam Newton, not forcing a throw downfield into coverage. Instead, checking it down to his running back and allowing him to go get the yards. And I'm not so certain that I like it when Mississippi State's defense only rushes four and gives Newton the time to check down. Fannin had his first catch of the night. Now the give to Mario Fannin. He had a little bit of running room, but an excellent tackle by Charles Mitchell, the junior from Clarksdale, Mississippi. You know, last week both of these offenses were very explosive. Cameron Newton leading the way on the ground and through the air. He's 9 of 14 through the air and had the second best rushing performance by any Auburn quarterback ever with 171 yards. Tonight, he's run for eight first downs, so hasn't broken the long run as he did against Arkansas State last week when he went for 71. Fannin has it. Flag comes down, but Mario Fannin's inside the 20 and inside the 10-yard line. We're going to see if it stands up. I don't think it's going to. It's going to be a hole. I believe they might have caught Darvin Adams, the receiver. It nullifies a 26-yard gain by Mario Fannin. One thing, head coach. Holding. Offense 77. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Still second down. It was A.J. Green checked that rather than the receiver caught for the hole. One thing head coach Gene Chizik told us is he wanted improvement from his football team in terms of penalties last year. 101st in the country averaging seven and a half penalties a game it's mistakes like this that nullify these big games a chance to ice wins and, and the other thing that he made that there were two points penalties and the other was consistency and so you know at this point tonight uh i think they've, they've been pretty darn good they're on the road in an sec battle now second and 19. Cameron Newton getting pressure. Newton escapes. This is where he's dangerous. Wanted to load it up. Instead, he'll run out of bounds just inside the 40-yard line. Nick Bell chasing him away. And to bring up a point about the previous play, the hold, it is the lone new start on the offensive front, A.J. Green, who's called for it. Yeah, you know what? He won the job in camp, and he's improving. But this right here is where you tell a defender, you've got to bring your legs and go through when you're trying to tackle a big body like Newton. That was Purnell McPhee, the best defensive lineman State has. He put a great move on Green, but Newton made something out of nothing. And now he needs to convert another third down. Third and 13, noise ramping up in Starkville. Play clock getting deep. Newton up top. Has his man, but out of bounds. It was Jay Wisner. We had an official who wound up on his keister backside over T. Kettle down in the end zone. <laughs> but he, you know what, though? He did a nice job getting up and making the call. He stayed in the game. He's an official. He is. You know what? He's got the back pedal. I wonder. Oh, it was the, it was the pylon. <laughs> how, how, how heavy are those pylons? Not very heavy. A little bit more than you would think, though. Enough, enough to take your legs on the back pedal. Uh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not an elite athlete like you, but... <laughs> yeah, that also is pushing it a little bit right there. <laughs> Everybody's okay. <laughs> Have a little chuckle because we care. And on the fourth down and 13. Still fourth down. Auburn going to... Give Ryan Shoemaker a little more room to work with as they try to Penn State back deep in its own territory. Gene Chizik has his staff back to back together. You know what? And, and that means so much to a football team and the growth of that ball club. You know, only two times in the last nine years has that happened at Auburn. It's the only staff in the SEC to return totally intact in year two. Looking for a great improvement, the punt. Shoemaker gets it high, not very deep. Bumpus has the opportunity to check that Barry to make the catch after the 32-yard punt. State will have it back when you come back. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, Auburn and Mississippi State. First game in conference play this year, and man, if it's setting the tone, 
NBA barn burner year again in the Southeastern Conference. 17-14, Tigers with the lead. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jed Brown. Happy to have you with us from Starkville tonight. Tyler Russell in at quarterback for Mississippi State. Russell, the better passer, going up top. Got a man out there and threw it a little bit short. Nico Thorpe was covering Arcido Clark. Auburn has done a great job defensively, not allowing the big play. Last week, Mississippi State had six plays of over 20 yards. Tonight, their longest play is 22 yards. Look at the right side of your screen, number 70, J.C. Brignoni on Mr. Fairley. We haven't called Fairley this half. That Mississippi State offensive line picked up the pace. Second and 10 for Russell. Quick pass. Not much running room at all for Brandon Heavens. Guys, there's an example of that Auburn secondary finally getting off blocks and running to the football and game tackling. We haven't seen them do it so far tonight. That's a great example right there. So you know what I do? I call, I pump it out there, and we've seen the blocker fake the block, run the wheel, and you're gone. Mississippi State. Looking for something. Russell, four of eight, only 19 yards passing on the night. Third and ten. Pressure coming. In trouble in the end zone. Russell gets rid of it and he's firing it out for Leon Berry. Fairly this time was applying some heat on the young redshirt freshman from Meridian and Mississippi State goes three and out. Tyler Russell is having a different kind of experience this week against an SEC defense. You see three white helmets in the backfield forcing Russell outside of the pocket. Welcome to the SEC, kid. It's not going to get any easier. Well, Russell, they believe, has a bright future here. He was perhaps the most highly recruited quarterback ever to sign with Mississippi State. I also have Brett Favre's nephew, Dylan, on roster. They're very pleased with his progress as well. Right now, State looking for a good punt. Richards hits it out of there, and Auburn won't have a chance to return it, but the Tigers will take over with excellent field position just inside Mississippi State territory. 39-yard punt, Auburn up by three. How are you holding up, man? Well, I, I tell you, my legs are sore, but I can't feel them. <laughs> <laughs> my fanny, my quad. Hey, but it's cool because each week we're going to try to see what the character of the trademark workout is for each university. And now the problem is every strength coach in the country that knows we're coming is going to try to wear us out. First down, Cameron Newton again on the scramble. And Chase throwing it back to Eric Smith, and Smith will have a first down. Football got loose. Might have been down. I think the officials are going to mark him down. Pick up. There's, there's, a lot about of, 13. Sorry, there's, a, there's a lot about Cameron Newton that this Auburn coaching staff does not yet know about. How does he play with a three-point lead late in games? Is he going to try to force things, or can he stay and play with composure? That time not forcing anything downfield, taking again the check down throw, keeping his team. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of poise here from Cameron yeah. Newton late in this game. Newton running with it. Stopped after a short game. And guys, you get the feeling this could be a knockout punch drive for Auburn. Mississippi State struggled a little bit on offense with the exception of that drive to open the half. A two-score margin would be very difficult as we head toward 10 minutes. Well, in this half, two drives prior to this one for a total of 70 yards. So Auburn's offense has been non-existent here in the second half. I'd do more quarterback draws. I'd keep putting it in the best player's hands out there. That'd be Cam Newton. Second down and nine. The junior college transfer. Newton feeling heat. Newton going down. Fletcher Cox. First man to get him for the dogs. Cox is sophomore from Yazoo City, Mississippi. Auburn loses six on the play. There's defensive coordinator Manny Diaz's calling card, trying to create pressure. Get guys free in the backfield. Cam Newton's been doing an outstanding job all night long, extending plays, but all of a sudden now, this excitement, a fresher defense for Mississippi State able to corral Cam Newton. 
Diaz wants his guys to play with excitement. He was looking for a stop on third and 15. Blitz coming. Newton gets rid of it. There was a little contact there as he was looking for Cody Burns. Corey Broomfield on the coverage. I see no flags. It'll be fourth down, a stop for the dog defense. The third time they've had the ball in the second half and the same result, having to punt the football. And it's because Mississippi State has changed their look and the pressure. He got away. He was there early. No, I'm not so sure. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he, he was there early. Got away with interference as Burns went up to catch the football. Now Shoemaker. Try to put State in bad field position. Bulldogs came after it. This one is going to go into the end zone for a touchback. Auburn holding on to a three-point lead on the road in Starkville. Opening night for SEC play on a Thursday night. Tigers up by three on the Bulldogs. Celebrating its sixth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.1 million in scholarship money. Not many field goals in the second half, but plenty of punts. The last six possessions for both teams combined have resulted in punts. Both defenses doing excellent work. Chris Ralph has returned at quarterback for Mississippi State. A give on the option and Vic Ballard plowing straight ahead. Well, Mississippi State has started their last two drives inside their 20 yard line. They went three and out both times. Here they are again, starting deep in their own end. Auburn's not gonna make it easy for them. If they're gonna get back in this game, they're gonna have to earn it and drive the field. Mississippi State has been more effective with Chris Relf at quarterback rather than Tyler Russell. Relf more adept at running the option. And he is now. The pitch. Bumpus has some room. Ted Bumpus up close to the 40-yard line before he steps out of bounds. They'll mark him out at the 37, but it's enough for a first down. I announced Navy in Maryland last week. This is a little bit like the old Navy option here, Jesse. You got the little slots for your pitchbacks. Looks like Georgia Tech, too, doesn't it? And I love the look, Craig, on offense, getting their wide receiver, Chad Bumpus, that speed in the backfield to be that perimeter threat. Same look. Ralph keeps it himself. There you go, Dan Mullen again. Les Caning, offensive coordinator, working, creating opportunities, trying to get away from the power of Auburn's inside defense. I will say this, State doesn't take a lot of snaps under center, and we did see Ralph fumble one earlier. Just something to keep an eye on. Make sure those center quarterback exchanges are good and problematic in college football. Now the gun. Ballard is the running back. He gives to the fullback, Hanrahan. Hanrahan's had his hands on the ball several times tonight. During fall camp, he, he told some reporters, there are more plays for me this year. He said, they're going to throw it to me in the flat and give it to me. When Dan Mullen was asked about it, he said, he wishes. But, but tonight, he's been effective. He made a nice catch on a third down. He's carried the ball a few times. Three carries for 21 yards. Mostly out of that option look. Last third and short we saw, Mississippi State receiver dropped the ball, didn't he? Got to finish the plays. Big third down for both sides. Shovel pass. Whoop. This time Josh Bynes made sure that goes nowhere. Brandon Henderson got it, but Bynes, Auburn had been fooled earlier on that play, but not this time. Uh, absolutely. This is how you have defensive players doing their job, making their play. Josh Bynes knows his responsibility. Takes care of it. Guys just staying at home, the watching the football, not over pursuing the football like they had on the previous play where they got burned. And now they'll get an opportunity to get the football back. About six and a half to go. Mines the leader on that defense, and he makes as big a play as Auburn has had in the second half. State kicks it away. Carr, who muffed one earlier, runs in, makes the catch. All right, John, Denard Robinson was sensational last week. Very similar numbers put up by Auburn's Cameron Newton against Arkansas State. And tonight, Newton has run for 73 yards, thrown a couple of touchdown passes, and now has a three-point lead in the ball. Six and a half to go. Michael Dyer. Dyer still on his feet. 
Michael Dyer is best run of the night out close to the 40-yard line. Let's check in with Jen Brown on Auburn's other running back, Mario Fannin. Well, uh, unfortunately, it's sad to say that Auburn is going to have to try to put something together on offense without uh, senior running back Mario Fannin. He will be out of the game with a left shoulder injury. Now, they will not tell me the severity of it, but I did stand on the sideline and watch several trainers working on him in what looked like they were attempting to pop his shoulder back in at one point. They did pull, and he was able to move his arm. He is out of pads, and he's icing his shoulder right now. Fannin has been a do-everything back for Malzahn, Jen. Well, that's not serious. Dyer had a big run on the last play, and he's got loose again. He is up to the 50-yard line. It'll be good for another first down. He's stopped by Nico Whitley. We said Malzahn needed to run some time off the clock. A good way to do it. Successive runs of 16 and 11 by Dyer. And that's to the left side. Lee Zemba's gone. Brandon Mosley doing his job. Very smart non-block by the wide receiver Darwin Adams. I'll say this, 19 of the 22 starters in offense or defense for Auburn are juniors or seniors. This is a very veteran group. Veteran teams are expected to know how to close games out late when you have the lead. Let's see if they can get that done now. First and 10. Keep it on the ground with Dyer. Freshman gets it into Mississippi State territory. Another tackle by Chris White. Well, and, and you, on the other side of the ball, you've got to have experience as well to hopefully counter the experience of Auburn. And Dan Mullen, he's he's got a lot of young players on his football team. Uh, you know that that just have not been out there enough. A lot of first timers. On the flip side, Dan Mullen told us he only has 11 seniors on his three, three deep. deep. Yes. So, totally different dynamics here for both of these teams. Derek Smith going in motion for the Tigers. Cody Burns can throw it. It's a backward pass, and he will. Back to Newton. It's up there a long time and a great block. And Newton's got a bunch of room to run. Big Cameron Newton rumbling down to the 25-yard line. The center, Ryan Pugh, came out and just annihilated the only guy who had a chance to stop Newton early. You got to watch the left side of the line. See them fall down with their cut blocks. They've fallen down. They've sold it. And then the ball oh. the throw. Oh, that hurts. Jonathan McKenzie, a defensive end, never thought this ball was getting thrown back to Cameron Newton, and he pays the price for it. How about Gus Malzahn? He throws a reverse pass last week with his third string quarterback, Neil Caudill. And then tonight, with the game on the line, he goes to the double pass. And now Auburn knocking on the door again. Dyer in the backfield. Michael Dyer has it. He is inside the 20-yard line, and the Tigers starting to assert their will. One of the things head coach Gene Chizik said he loves about Michael Dyer is that he protects the football. He's got great ball security, Craig, and as a running back, in this type of situation, that's got to be the most important thing. And the coaches have followed that. They know that trend. They understand it. They appreciate that from the spring and then in the fall camp. So that's why he's in the ball game. You, you know that you can depend on him not putting it on the ground. Auburn bleeding that clock inside three and a half minutes to go. Well within West Byron's field goal range, but what the Tigers would like to do is apply the knockout punch with a touchdown. Here comes the blitz. Dyer keeping those legs churning. It'll bring up a third down. Emmanuel Gatling, who's had a good night on defense for Manny Diaz's club, makes the stop. But Mississippi State's offense just couldn't take advantage of the lack of offense of Auburn in the second half. You know, they just, they just never did anything with it. Well, they recovered an onside kick that was really all for naught. They went three and out and were forced to punt the football back. Manny Diaz's unit right now on defense for Mississippi State needs a huge stop. They have to have it now or this is ball game. Third and one. Auburn six of 13 on third down tonight. Here comes the pressure. Newton, hit the backfield, he won't get it. Pernell McPhee messed up the play, and now Gene Chiswick will almost certainly send the field goal unit out. Uh, you talk about pressure coming, but responsibility as well. Watch over here. Watch the responsible action of McPhee. Staying over there, not leaving and running inside. He's a veteran presence on that defensive line. He's a leader of that defense. Letting his play 
speak for him. The revelry going on. Cowbells rocking. It's an appropriate time to ring them right now. Mississippi State's defense just came up with a huge third down stop. And now, in all likelihood, West Byram will come on to attempt a 38-yard field goal. He's been a tremendous pressure kicker in his career. Three game winners, and he's hit his last nine attempts. Almost certainly will become Auburn's all-time leading scorer by the end of the season. They'll call this one 37 exactly. Byram one for one on the night. It's blocked! A huge stand for the maroon and white. We've seen the push tonight coming from Auburn's defense on the inside. This one on the field goal block, the pressure right up the middle, Jesse. The special teams for Mississippi State has come up huge tonight. Whether it's been recovering a muff punt, led to seven points, recovering an onside kick, the push they get up the middle, able to get their hands on the football, now down only three points. We believe it was Fletcher Cox who got a hand on it for the Bullies, but now they've got to get something going on offense. Auburn clinging to a three-point lead. Chris Ralph at quarterback. First pass is complete, but a short game. Quick tackle by Nico Thorpe on the catch by Arcito Clock. Clock is winding toward two minutes. State with only one timeout. Using a lot of time, crowd getting a little anxious. Ralph, standing and delivering, and he throws it short. He had his man out there again. It was Leon Berry, and we've seen Ralph do this several times tonight. And it hasn't just been Ralph. Tyler Russell is, is as guilty. There have been opportunities downfield to make plays in the passing game for Mississippi State. And you have to capitalize. These are tight windows. Playing these SEC defenses, you have to capitalize to stay in game. 34, it's four down territory. At this juncture in the game, Ralph stands in. Fires high, it's incomplete, it'll be fourth down. Well, and you know what? Ted Roof decided, defensive coordinator, to go man to man, rush four, and man up. When you get man to man, and you've got pass protection. You have to win your route and make the play. And he does. Brandon Heavens wide open over the middle of the football field. You get the route you want against the coverage, like you said, Craig. You got to hit it. Now we got a big fourth down. Well, this is the game for Mississippi State. Chance to stay in it here. Fourth and four. Auburn by three. Ralph on the go route. Got him. First down, Arsino Clark. Ninety-three seconds left. First down, State. Auburn again defensively giving them bump and run up the line of scrimmage. It's up to Arcedo Clark to win. He gets a clean release. Ball a bit underthrown, but he beat him so bad off the line he was able to come back and make the catch. Fresh set of downs. Bynes showing pressure. He drops out. Bumpus. A tremendous tackle by Zach Etheridge, the senior from Troy, Alabama. Clock still winding. Again, keep in mind that this is plenty of time to get this thing done. You're working at a minimum to get down to field goal range. With the timeout to play with. Second and nine. Chris Ralph can't take a sack here, but he does. And now Mullen's going to use the timeout. Jesse, you sort of threw, threw your arms into the air. It's, it's, it, it, can't it, afford it. No, you really can't. And, and Auburn right now has decided to challenge Mississippi State at the line of scrimmage on the perimeter of the football field. Bump and run. And they're going to rush four guys. But the quarterback's got to know you cannot take sacks in two-minute offense. And, and I'll give you guys a guess who I just circled there. <laughs> who is that? Oh, who 90. is that? Nick Fairley. 90. Fairley is the guy. He was quiet in the third quarter. But if you continue to give him a chance, Rallying down three against Auburn. Chris Ralph throwing up, looking for Clark again. Arcido had his hands on it, couldn't hold it, and the flags are flying, and this could be a huge penalty against the Tigers.
Pass interference. Defense number 22. Penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. The Charvin Bell gets caught for it. Arsino Clark was a defensive back. I like the way he goes to the football and makes the adjustment, which causes the pass to the well, third. Well. Bell is just so quick off the line of scrimmage. That's twice on this drive. He's won it and, and been behind the defender. A better throw here by Chris Ralph. That might be six. But, you know, that was, it, it should have been called on Nico Thorpe 15. Uh, Bell wasn't in the play. That was the number they gave. But the corner, Nico Thorpe, was the one who was nabbed. So now with 45 seconds, it's a first and 10 for the Bulldogs just outside the Auburn 40. Ralph comes out of there. They'll call it an incomplete pass. It was Josh Bynes applying the pressure. 41 seconds left. Mississippi State probably needs to get at least to the 30-yard line to give Sean Broccoli a legitimate chance. That was the first time we've seen Auburn's defense bring five. That linebacker at the snap came, came clean. They'd lulled Mississippi State's line to thinking it was just going to be a four-man rush. Broccoli's career long as a field goal kicker is 49, but State is still thinking touchdown now. Second and ten. Ralph has time, has his man out there. Oh, and he dropped the football. Leon Berry had it right in his hands, well within field goal range, and he dropped it. Yeah, Leon Berry has been working on his lean with the defensive back to give himself room to make the catch. He's their most dependable receiver. Got to finish it. It's another throw you think would be best served if the quarterback gets it out front. Here's an example, though. That back shoulder throw is the best possible throw in that scenario. Ralph does a great job putting it on the back number. Just have to come up with the catch. Big time play. Here we are, third and long. Watch that linebacker coming again. I bet they come with five. Ralph, they pick up Bynes. Ralph throwing it to the outside, and he was looking for Heavens, and he was out of bounds. Devon Washington on the coverage, so Mississippi State, who converted a fourth down to stay alive earlier in this drive, faced with a fourth and ten. Mullen is out of Broccoli's field goal range. He can't reach for a long one. It would be about 58 from here. Career long is 49, so and with 27 seconds left, he's got to pick up 10. And Auburn's played only one coverage this entire drive. It's been man-to-man. -man. Certainly that's what Mississippi State is expecting right here. They'll try to dial up a man-to-man -man beater. Play clock's getting deep. Up. No timeout for State. They get it off. Ralph again to the outside and a miscommunication on the coverage and Auburn's defense makes the stand. We talked about Dan Mullen having a very young team with the game on the line. We saw a lot of inconsistency. There was a drop pass, a busted route. When you get a chance, don't you? you got to, you've got to take advantage of it. You have to finish plays. I thought the offensive line did their job, providing some time, some opportunity for throwing the ball down the field by Ralph. But Auburn's defense bent, didn't break. They stood up. Bynes made a huge play. They applied pressure when they needed to. And you know, they were called for the pass interference penalty that really set State up after that. Four incompletions. Auburn's defense rising up, and maybe the offense didn't do what it had hoped in the second half. But in the SEC, any win on the road is a pretty one, and Cameron Newton comes into Starkville, the place where he almost called home, and he's going to walk out with a victory, and he is our Wrangler five-star player of the game. Cameron Newton, 136 yards through the air, a couple of touchdowns, and more importantly, 70 rushing yards. Didn't have the numbers he had last week in his opener against Arkansas State, but I'd argue he was probably just as effective and still dominant in this football game. You know what? And it was against an SEC opponent, a good team that's getting a lot better on the road in front of a hostile environment. The Cowbells were out tonight, so I'm with you, Jesse. I think, I think he had a numbers-wise not there, nine carries, 11 yards in the second half, but he didn't make mistakes.
and he converted on third down with his legs. It seemed as if almost every time he ran, he didn't break those big gainers that Manny Diaz wanted to avoid against, but he kept moving the chains. I think poise would be the thing I was most impressed about with Cameron Newton tonight again. He had a lead, but it wasn't a big lead. And it's easy for a quarterback that's experienced success early in his career here at Auburn to want to make every play late in the game, but he didn't force things. He didn't have any ball security issues late in this football game. He played smart. He allowed his defense to go out and do what they do, and Auburn has the win. They're 2 Boy, and Nick, Nick Fairley was outstanding for Ted Roof's defense, too. Ooh. He was the dominant defensive player in, in this game. And, and you know what? Now Auburn has a two-game advantage on Mississippi State in the West. Gene Chizik's football team off to a good start. Hey, this schedule really sets up well for Auburn. It's one of the reasons that Several, including our Kirk Herbstreet, believes Auburn will win the SEC West. You got a home game against Clemson, home game against a ranked South Carolina team, home game against ranked Arkansas, home game against ranked LSU. You got Georgia at home. Tell you what, that last game tough on the road at Alabama, but you're right, this schedule sets up well, but there's a lot to look forward to. There are positives. Starting 2-0, they get on the right foot. 